The SNP ferry scandal has damaged our nation's reputation for shipbuilding excellence mm -hmm. and has left islanders without vital transport links they need for their everyday lives. This week, Audit Scotland said this, the costs to complete the ferries have continued to escalate. The total cost to taxpayers because of SNP incompetence is now £338 million, pounds, three and a half times more than the original contract of £97 million, pounds, and there is still no completion date for the ferries. But Ferguson Marine, fully owned by the SNP government, has paid out bonuses of £87,000 to highly paid chiefs. So very simply, First Minister, what were these bonuses for? Yeah. First Minister. Presenting officer, uh, before I answer uh, these questions, let me remind the Chamber that the Deputy First Minister will make a statement to Parliament this afternoon uh, on these issues and will provide uh, updates in respect of some of these issues. Um, two, two issues. Uh, in response to Douglas Ross's question. Uh, firstly, in respect of the Audit Scotland Section 22 report that was published on Tuesday, we welcome uh, that report and certainly acknowledge the legitimate issues uh, that were raised in it. And as I said, the Deputy First Minister will provide uh, the update requested by the Auditor General uh, this afternoon. Uh, that report is critical of the payment uh, of bonuses to senior staff uh, at the Yard in the financial year. 2021-22 um, and the process by which these uh, payments were arrived at. Uh, we accept that criticism and can assure Parliament that new arrangements uh, have been put in place indeed at the Deputy First Minister's request to ensure uh, that that does not arise in the future. Uh, the second point from me is in relation uh, to the construction of the ferries. I have said many times and I say again uh, we deeply regret uh, the delays to uh, the completion of the ferries and the cost overruns. Uh, the uh, management at the yard uh, has uh, of course made assessments of the cost of completing uh, the ferries and Scottish Government officials are applying uh, robust scrutiny to that. But again, the Deputy First Minister will be able to give a further update to Parliament this afternoon. Douglas Ross. I, I'm sorry, our standing orders of this Parliament are very clear. If a Minister is aware of information that they can provide to Parliament, they should do so. It's not acceptable for the First Minister to say, tune in in a couple of hours' time. This is First Minister's questions. As the Leader of the Opposition here in Holyrood, I'm asking about an issue that she must be aware of. So I will ask again, what were these bonuses for? £87,000 of taxpayers' money, as the Deputy First Minister whispers in her ear. I hope he has the answer for the First Minister to give this chamber a First Minister's question. Because the Auditor General is clear that these bonuses were unacceptable. His words. We think they are downright scandalous. It is indefensible. It is a bonus for failure. And this failure is all on the SNP government. This is a company owned by ministers. Mm -hmm. They are ultimately in charge of it. So will the SNP government and the First Minister intervene now and demand these bogus bonuses are returned to the taxpayer? Yeah. First Minister. Well, Presiding officer, I am aware Douglas Ross uh, is really interested in listening to the answers to questions, but I, I am answering the questions in relation, in relation to the bonuses. Uh, Audit Scotland uh, Thank issued, you. issued a Section 22 report that was published on Tuesday, and in that report, uh, the Auditor General is clear uh, that the governance involved in the process that led to these payments uh, was deficient. In other words, it is not possible to be clear about the basis of these bonus payments. Uh, these performance. Excuse payments. me, First Minister. That Excuse is why me, First Minister. Sorry, we will hear one another in this chamber at all times with courtesy and respect. Regardless of who is speaking in the chamber, I expect all members to do the courtesy of listening. Thank you. That indeed is why uh, changes have been put in place, new arrangements have been put in place uh, to ensure that a situation like this doesn't arise again. Of course, there has been changes in the management uh, at the shipyard uh, since the, the financial year in which these bonuses uh, were paid. Uh, so we take seriously and respond uh, in full uh, to the views uh, in the Section 22 report published by the Auditor General. Uh, more generally, as I went on to say, uh, focus continues 
continues to be on ensuring the completion of the ferries and that the Scottish Government applies robust scrutiny uh, to all cost assessments uh, that are issued uh, by the shipyard. Douglas Ross. Really? Really, the Scottish Government uh, you know, ensures that they look at all the costs paid by the shipyard. So why can the First Minister not just stand up and tell me, asking the question, and people here in the Chamber, and people across Scotland, what was done by the fat cats to deserve £87,000 of bonuses? It's a very simple question. Audit Scotland said this week, it is not clear how the performance was assessed, nor were appropriate frameworks and governments in place. These bonuses for failure should not have been allowed, and the First Minister should be able to tell the people of Scotland what they were paid for. And she went on to say there are changes so the situation doesn't arise again. But today, today, there are reports that the current Chief Executive of Ferguson Marine can get an £82,000 bonus every year, and his contract has no criteria for measuring performance. So once again, Nicola Sturgeon and this government is putting eye-watering sums of public money in jeopardy to be paid to ferry bosses for failure. So, First Minister, why are fat cat bosses getting a single ferry, a single penny before a ferry has been finished? First Minister. The issue identified uh, by Audit Scotland is that the process involved in the payment of these uh, bonuses was deficient and therefore there is not sufficient clarity of the basis in which they were paid. Uh, that is the issue uh, that was identified and the issue uh, that we are seeking to address so that a situation like this uh, cannot arise in the future. Um, and uh, that is the position I have set out and I'm setting it out clearly and of course the Deputy First Minister will make a further statement to Parliament uh, later on uh, where others can question him on that as well. And we remain focused in supporting the shipyard to complete uh, the ferries as quickly as possible. Um, I have said many times before, and I will no doubt say uh, many times again, uh, the delays and the cost overruns are deeply regrettable. But I come back to a point I've also made uh, many times again. Uh, we have always been determined to secure the future of that shipyard in order that it can deliver these ferries and have a future uh, that allows those employed at the shipyard to continue to be employed there. Uh, so yes, uh, there have been uh, regrettable failings here, uh, which of course the government is accountable for, uh, but we remain focused on addressing these and we will continue to do it uh, with that determination and focus. Douglas Ross. I, I think it's incredible that the First Minister just accepts us all to, to be happy that a mistake has happened. We don't know why this money has been paid out, but it is £87 million of taxpayers' money going into a project that is already three and a half times over budget. I'm not sure what John Swinney is going to pull out of the hat this afternoon, but if it's the same answers, people of Scotland will demand more, because this is our taxpayers' money that is being wasted with no accountability from Nicola Sturgeon or the SNP. So on top of £87,000 of bonuses for failure, CMAL, the ferry agency, has spent almost £100,000 on a PR firm. What a waste of money. No one can put positive spin on this disaster. Speaking this week, Audit Scotland, in their report, said this. There is still no certainty over how much the ferries will cost, when they will be ready, or whether the shipyard has a viable future. Those are the words of the Auditor General. So as Nicola Sturgeon prepares to sail off into retirement and considers her own legacy, she should reflect on the fact that these ferries have been in construction throughout her time in office and they remain rusting hulks and the islanders who rely on them remain without these vital links. So can the people of Scotland get a straight, honest answer from the First Minister for once? When will these ferries be ready and how much will the total cost be? First Minister. Well, firstly, going back to the very beginning of that question, um, if I've learned one thing uh, over uh, recent times in this job, it's never to expect Douglas Ross to be happy uh, about anything. So uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm sure, not sure that is going to, to change. In 
In terms of uh, the detail of the questions, of course, uh, the estimates for cost uh, and delivery of the ferries are in the public domain. Uh, they will be updated as appropriate. The Deputy First Minister will give a further update to Parliament uh, later this afternoon. Uh, but of course, uh, Ferguson's have continued uh, to progress uh, with the building uh, of the ferries. Uh, for example, uh, the MV Glen Sanock successfully uh, completed uh, a dry docking period at the start of this month. Uh, so these milestones uh, continue, continue to, to be delivered. Um, I am of the view that the failures here uh, are unacceptable. I deeply regret these failures, uh, but that is why it is important uh, that we continue to focus on delivering these ferries um, and also securing a long-term future uh, for the shipyard. In terms of the Auditor General's comments about viability, of course, all uh, businesses have to secure long-term viability. The Yard is working to secure uh, commercial opportunities and has uh, already been successful in securing some commercial opportunities. And that, of course, is part of our priority, to make sure the ferries are completed, but then, of course, uh, to make sure that Ferguson Shipyard it has uh, a long and secure future and continues to employ those whose jobs depend on it.